Oh, it's Dan. Hi, um, my name is Christine. Um, I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Sure. Cool. Can I share a scripture with you? Probably the same scripture that I use. Really? Okay. Well, um, do you have? You must be one of Joe's. You must be one of Joe's witnesses. Oh no, no. <laughs> this isn't a scripture they use really too much. But would you like to hear it? Sure. What you okay. Have? It's in Titus three through through uh, four through six. Uh, it says, "But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, which He poured out on us generally through." Generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And how do you apply that? Just as it says. I mean, um, has he saved you? It says he saved us, past tense, not because of righteous things we had done, not by works or because of works. And he saves through the washing of rebirth, which means born again. See, it calls it a washing. I love that. It calls it the washing of rebirth. I like the New Living Translation there, too. I had that written down here somewhere. Anyways, um, yeah, you know, are you? have you been washed? Have you experienced the washing of rebirth? It says he's well, saved. Well, I've experienced, uh, I certainly appreciated God's loving kindness that he uh, his son died for our sins, and then we have an opportunity for everlasting life. An opportunity, or on. just an opportunity. An opportunity. It seems like in the, you know, in the Jehovah's Witness literature, they mock the idea of being saved, and no, you know no, the word. No. Can I finish? The word "saved" is used in the New Testament as a past oh, tense, yes. as a present possession. But the problem is that all those verses that talk about having salvation as a present possession, being justified, would only apply to the 144,000 in their view. And here, it being saved, past tense, but through the washing of rebirth. Yeah. So where, how would you so, ever know your sins are forgiven? Um, there's no verses about having forgiveness of sins apart from the washing of rebirth and the new covenant. Why would Paul say that his salvation was not assured until his death? No, he didn't say that. He knew he was saved, justified, mm -hmm. sanctified, reconciled to God. Sometimes saved is used in a different way. So see, the, pu the publications don't get into the nuances. Of, they will just take a word and define it the same way in every passage. You know, like he who endures to the end shall be saved. But what it's talking about there is he'll be saved through the destruction of Jerusalem physically. It's not talking about spiritual salvation. Are you sure? Yeah, I mean, with the whole, script, the whole scripture of Matthew 24 speaks of the conclusion of the system of things. Right. That and goes then beyond person, just the Jerusalem's well, destruction, which is serious enough. Well, people who have done that, the second fulfillment thing, um, have all been wrong. And, you know, as the society has been wrong many times about that. And to me, it seems like the setting is the destruction of the temple. That's what they asked him about in the first two verses. But anyway, I just think it's it's such a neat verse, and there's so many scriptures that go along with that, you know. I mean, you, you do know the verses in Ezekiel and Jeremiah that connect the new covenant with the forgiveness of sins and having a new heart placed in a believer, removing our heart of stone and being given a heart of flesh. And it says in Ezekiel, he will put his Holy Spirit within us. So... That forgiveness is wrapped up with the new covenant. There's no scriptures for um, some other class kind of Christians, you know, about forgiveness of sins. Do you, do you know of any specifically? Do I know any yeah. scriptures specifically? Yeah, that, that well, say your sins are forgiven apart from 
the new birth and the blood of Christ and the new covenant? Well, he did establish a new covenant for a kingdom with his disciples there in Luke chapter 22. Yeah. And if you look up the word kingdom in the New Testament, it means the reign of Christ. And they don't, it's very interesting to me that they don't use the Matthew 26 passage where Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. See, yes. you're conditioned to think of kingdom as some government having to do with Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> so, you know, if you look up the word kingdom, they're gonna, it's, it's, you're going to get a completely different idea. Like in Romans 14, it says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Which is very interesting. So what, what, is, what does Daniel 2.44 mean to you then? I think it's talking about the rulership of Christ. That it would destroy the governments on earth and set up a kingdom of its own here on earth? Yeah, destroyed sometimes does not mean something is non-existent. It says in the Bible that Christ destroyed the works of the devil. He destroyed uh, the power of sin. See, it doesn't mean it's non-existent. It means you you overcome it so it's it's a kind of bible way of talking their literalistic interpretations have not served them well over their history have they how uh, how would you explain revelation 21 4 well <laughs> i can't really do a bible go around like right off my head but um why do you, why would you rely on um their their interpretations their history has has led so many people astray that, and things they said in the name of Jehovah and then didn't happen. And, and people base their whole lives on that, on those things. Uh, well, <laughs> you can read the scriptures that uh, men have based their lives on what Jehovah God has said throughout throughout the scriptures. And no, I'm talking about the interpretations of the Watchtower Society, not, not a Bible verse. But what they have well, which, said which is the cite, Bible which means. Cites the script- which cites the scriptures as evidence. Which Do you think scripture wrongly, could be used wrongly? Such as what you might be doing? <laughs> good one, good one. But they, if you'll notice the cherry picking they do, they just um, take things out of, they, they make up their own stuff and then find verses that seem kind of to go along with it. And if you start looking them all up, you'll, you'll see like, hey, this is not about what they're talking about, right? So, you know, that's a interesting exercise to actually look up um, the verses they cite and um, read the whole passage. Yeah, oh yeah, I've been doing it for 60 years, so uh, mm. I uh, kind of appreciate that when it says in 2 Timothy 3 that all scripture is inspired of God. Right, right. And official for teaching inspired of God. Right, but it can be, be distorted. For the future and for now. Yeah, it can be distorted. Like Mormonism takes out a verse that just has the expression baptism for the dead, and they run wild with it. And see, the society uses verse scriptures in the same way. They first say something, and then they give a verse that has similar wording or you know, may seem to say that, rather than exegeting a whole passage. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a verse by verse you know, of the whole passage, considering the whole chapter, considering what type of book of the Bible it is. So they, they don't do that. There's a thing called eisegesis, where you read in, whatever you think, you know, and it re- their history reveals how, how wrong they have been, you know. I guess I do not know. What? No. Well, you said you know. Uh, yeah, I've studied, and you can see that I better understand the scriptures as it says in Proverbs 8 becomes lighter, brighter and brighter as the years go by. So uh, as I'm, the, uh, I'm yeah, that, with that. Is the, you think that's that. about doctrine, changing doctrine? In, in context, again, they're taking that out of context, so that then they become un, they become untestable because of that verse. New light. But the problem is, where did the previous teaching come from? Because they call themselves Jehovah's only channel, which means a conduit from Jehovah to them. Channel. Like, see, they're the channel, Jehovah. They're the channel, the conduit to the people. What's your channel? Is it private interpretation? Uh, I don't use the word channel in, in the Bible. It's it's actually an occultic expression, like channeling, spiritism. 
which they've done in the past. They used to say Russell was still directing the organization after he died. So that, that would be channeling, <laughs> you know. Uh, so where do you get your direction as to understanding the scriptures, is it? Uh, most, general? mostly I like the ancient, um, you know, um, essentials of the faith put forth in what we call the ecumenical creeds, which are a great point of unity for all Christians. They just talk about really basic things that Christians believe. You can see what the first century Christians believed by some of the, well, first and second century by the earliest writings that we have. Some of them were actually discipled or taught by apostles. And we have, you know, some of their writings, like Ignatius, Irenaeus, Polycarp. So well, that's a yeah, good that's a good funny. source. And I like teachers that are sound of doctrine. Teacher teachers are biblical, but we don't call them channel. We the Bible says test all things, be like a Berean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. See whether they were actually so. Yeah. Deuteronomy so, eighteen uh, is a good test of false prophets. People who predict things that don't come true. Talks about that in Deuteronomy eighteen. 20 through 22 so there it's very easy to negate you know who you shouldn't listen to so they do not refer to that verse <laughs> very often so well that that's where you're mistaken they refer to that many times really so what does it say i don't i don't i don't know how much you've read or uh -huh. where you're getting information but, they refer uh, to deuteronomy 18 20 through 22 many times i've looked it up on the online library which has everything from about 1950 on so you can check it out yourself. And they have called themselves prophet. And they say the direction they teach comes from Jehovah. You know you know that's yes. true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So where yes. does their where did their old so life why, why, come from? Why, why would you check why would you check the JW library if you uh, felt that there was no value to it? Oh, to, so I can understand their points of view and talk to Jehovah's Witnesses. Is that where you got my number? Um, yes, they gave it at the Kingdom Hall from the, the yeah. answering machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so it's it's nice they give a resource like that. <laughs> how, are, how are you doing with everything? I, I know Why, you guys you. have the Zoom meetings and everything. We have enjoyed that very much in this, oh. during this COVID-19 period. Mm -hmm. Do you, are they planning to go back? Because almost all churches like have meetings now. Well, out of respect for life, we're going respect to make sure that it's safe to, uh, to gather together, at least physically. Hmm. So that's why uh, we'll meet online until such time as it's, it's safe. Thank you for your call. Okay, well, um, thank you. Thanks for talking. God bless you.